I was a prisoner in Korea. One GI among a lot of others in the same boat. Forty nights in a row, the commies kept us on the march. They starved us. For days, we went without water. We were sick, weak, beaten. Our feet bled and wrapped in rags. Still, they drove us on and on, always at night. Destination unknown. Those who couldn't move remain where they fell, marching, marching, marching. Finally, at the end of that nightmare, they herded us into a camp. Welcome, comrades, to Camp Sakju. Hey, you go, Sak. Buddy, get this side. How about them? Turk, Greek. All same yank, this side. All yank, this side. Sak. What outfit are you with? 40th Division. Welcome to Motel P.O.W., but I'm warning you, not recommended by Duncan Hines. <laughs> Fight! Fight it! On you go. Inside! Inside! Hey, Meatball, just put the skinny guys in here. We're already packed in like sardines. This guy on the stretcher, don't he get assigned to a hospital? Hospital? No, I have hospital. Oh, that's Meatball. He's got a dual personality, and I hate both of them. Move in! Make snappy! Hey, you guys, wave your feet. We don't like the outside mud mixed with the inside mud. This is like the black hole at Calcutta. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Well, they gave you a rough time in the march, right? Forty days. Started out with 166 and wound up with 70. Jackson's a good medico. There'd be less of us than that. Hey, this guy's on his last legs. Leg, you mean? We left the other one in a farmhouse a couple of weeks ago. Where can we put him? Bring him over there. Get those boondockers out of the way. Oh, easy, boys, down. easy. Got a little water and a rag? Yeah, I think so. Wait a minute. I'll come to see only bed in the joint. You tell him, Pike. Belongs to the hut leader, crud named Sergeant Rand, sneaking collaborator. Commies have a fancy name for it, progressive. Yeah, I'll bet she's out there right now on his knees, lowered in a snake's belly, sucking around them commies for more privileges. Sounds like a real doll. Mm -hmm. Hey, Junior, come here. Park your chassis, join me in a lower. You guys got cars back home? Cars? You flipped your lid? Don't mind him. He's car salesman from Seattle. Sales Happy Slade, we call him. How are the peace talks coming up, Panama Jim? Looks like the commies are stalling, using double talk. Yeah, well, they better settle it up quick. My enlistment time's up soon, and I got no intention of staying in this man's army one day overtime. <laughs> you don't say. Business. <laughs> uh, 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 Philaxu! Anybody here talk Greek? My name is Spiros Metaxos. I am Greek. You never have a You can't You can't have a 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 he does not hear me. Talk about his mother in the farm. Tell him tomorrow we'll get him a priest. You got a Catholic priest here? Yeah, Father Dolan. Got caught in the invasion. Akure pedi mo tasa pukate kalatora. Avriu to proi tarti enes papas na sumilisi tasa kani kalo. Katala veins re pedi mo enes papas tarti avriu na sumilisi serene. Ah, bravo. He understands. 
Here goes the last shot of morphine. Maybe this will help. Hey, look who's here. Our pro. Hiya, Sarge. Enjoy that commie lecture tonight? Was it about that dove apiece fluttering around all over the Kremlin? <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, boys. After all, comes the revolution. He'll be chief commissar over the U.S. <laughs> and all, our, all us are gonna be slaving in the salt mines of Savannah, Georgia. Boys, you got it all wrong. In the first place, I took a little stroll to get a breath of fresh air, a privilege which is denied you gentlemen at night. <laughs> then I went by the library and had a delightful chat with our comrade instructor, Lee Chung. I must admit, the tea poured out of a samovar, mind you. It's quite delicious. How very jolly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hit the sack. Is this one of the new arrivals? Who put him on my bunk? I did. Who are you? Corporal Brady. Well, get him off my bed. Sure. Come Christmas, I will. And I'll get him off myself. Oh, the Corporal! The commies don't like anybody roughing up their prose. Don't argue about it, guys. He can be moved now. Move? Yes, Corporal. He is dead. All right, then move it. Put him in the schoolhouse. I'll appoint a burial detail in the morning. Attention, comrade soldiers. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Time to get up. We greet you this morning, as usual, with the Poet and Peasant Overture. What's that? I don't know. What is it, Brady? Hey! Hey! They wake us up with beautiful music every stinking morning. your second time around? No, sir. I'm sorry. I was hungry. Well, I'm sorry, too. But if I give you any more, there won't be enough to go around. Next. Hey, looky here! Hey, looky here! Hey, mine's got caraway seeds. That's a caraway seed, Arkansas. It's the first one I ever seen walking. <laughs> You see, boys, every day you hear your back pay keeps accumulating. Now, that's how I set up all these bills of sale. Why, Joe over there has enough for six payments on his Ford. And a guy in Barrack 6 by the name of Moose Murphy, if he's here only 14 more months, he's going to own his Buick outright. Not bad. Sure. Uh, I'd rather wait till I get home. Well, suit yourself, boy. But well, believe me, you're going to feel like a cheapskate walking around here like an ordinary pedestrian when everybody's driving Mercury's and Chevy's and Studebaker's and even Lincoln's. No wonder there's signs of malnutrition. This millet hasn't any more calories than a thin slice of bread. He's so hungry I could eat a horse. Where can a guy get a horse? In Sioux City, Iowa. Yeah, that's where I'm gonna be come June the 12th next. 
the time my enlistment period's up. Yeah, you talk, Pop. You think it was easier busting out of here than to get in? I've been here for 14 months and I haven't seen anybody make it yet. Not alive, anyhow. Me, I'll make it. Because there's a wife and two kids waiting for Pop. I got that in the last mail call. With a family like that, how come you enlisted? I re-enlisted to hold my rank of tech sergeant. I had my wife and two kids living on the post. The only thing I didn't figure on was the Korean War. I hope you make it, Pop. I'd sure hate to have to write one of them letters to your wife. I'll make it, Corporal. Hey, here comes Father Dolan. Hi, Padre. Yeah, have some chow. No, thanks, boys. I've already eaten. Are you kidding? These commies wouldn't let you get near a crumb of bread. I'll get you some, Father. Hello, Father. Hi, Hi Padre. Hi, Father. Well, boys, it looks as though St. Dismas, the good thief, is still answering my prayers. One for each barracks. How'd you get hold of soap, Father? I hate to confess it, but I was obliged to dig a hole under the storehouse and fish it out cake by cake like a burglar. <laughs> Here, Father. Thanks, son. You're one of the new ones, aren't you? Yes, Father. We buried one this morning, Greek Orthodox. Metaxas here, he can take you to the grave. That makes seven this week. Scared somebody might give you a conk on the head and take that food away from you? Food such as this, Corporal, is available to everyone. I can't stand it! I can't stand it! Boys, I got religion. Hallelujah! I'm going right up that there, Commandant Sai Tung. I'm say, Comrade Commandant, I've been converted to communism. I hereby adhere to the principles of Lenin, Engel, and uh, Marx Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as you feed me corn pone and chitlins and candied yams and long slices of crisp brown bacon with hot steaming coffee and southern fried chicken with the gravy just doozing out all over the nice pretty boy. <laughs> For past two hours, have been talking to you on very important subject. We'll now continue to discuss subject of great interest to you. Why are we treating you so well? The reason we are treating you so well is because you, from underprivileged, from oppressed, from common members of working class, it is working class people in capitalistic countries who pour out sweat in time of peace and blood in time of war. Ah. I see one of our comrade students is making notes. Good. Very good. Thank you. It is working class people who fatten bellies of Wall Street bosses. That is why we embrace working class people. That is why we treat you so well. You may go, comrade. Oh, I, I don't want to go no place. I, I just want to discuss the subject. Good. Proceed. Well, well sir, all, all I can say is that f until I come here, I never had it so good before. Good. Excellent. Well, about, about seven, eight weeks ago, I even found a little chunk of pork in my chow. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I think it's pork. I've been asking myself ever since, how can they be so good to me? Excellent. Most excellent. Uh, with your permission, comrade instructor, I'd, I'd like to sing a little song ditty entitled, Oh, We Never Had It So Good Before. It will make me very happy. Well, you see, it, it, now, come on, now, camp meeting style, everybody sing to the tune of She Be Coming Around the Mountain. Hey, camp meeting style, here we go. Oh, we never had it so not good before. Can't you see they're ribbing you? Ribbing? Kidding you, pulling your leg. It 
is a joke? That's right. They're making a monkey out of you. You, comrade prisoner, stand at attention. <laughs> What'd I do? You have insulted the Politburo. You have answered proletarian hospitality with bourgeois ingratitude. Hey, Pike, did I do all that? Yeah. And teacher's pet tipped him off. Silence. For this, you will be punished. Like with gun. Take him away. Put him in the ice house. Solitary confinement. Hey. Order. Or no chow tomorrow. Class dismissed. Hey, Rand. Stop it! Right. Come on now. Come on, Pike, get out here. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Hey, fellas! Knock it off! It's Tanya, the Queen of Sheba. She's on her way. Hey, here she comes. Hey, maybe she'll look at it. It's just time. Quit your shoving. Is that something? Who is she? How, how, how come she's here? She's a ballerina. She's married to the brainwashed chief from Moscow. Hey, Daniel. Hola. I use a brainwash. <laughs> Touch it, Shania! Dance, ballerina dance! Look, fellas, I'm Nijinsky. I'm a ballet dancer. Catch me, slave! I fly through the air with the greatest of ease. Catch me! Enjoying yourself, comrade? So you think if I turned pro, too, they'd serve me up a dish like that, Tanya? Who knows? They might even give you a harem full of ballet dancers. Mm-hmm. You know what gets me, chum? How come a creep like you ever made master sergeant, anyway? I had a little inside drag with the colonel's wife. Mm -hmm. They give you a dog tag? 16943852. May time. 30 days as September, April, May, and I'll be a... How come you didn't let me know before? First chance I got. Well, what's the story? Simple enough. I'm in the process, let's say, of climbing under the covers with a proletariat. Sounds cozy. Well, anyway, I'm here to help. We need information at Pan Moon John. We need it bad. Calling Sergeant Rand. Comrade Rand, wanted at the Commandant's office. Maybe they'll give you that dope on a silver platter. Yeah, either that or lay me out on one. Brother, I wouldn't be the heel you're making out of yourself for half the state of Texas. You know, pretty soon I won't even take a back seat to Benedict Arnold. So long, Benny. There he is. Lay out the red carpet, boys. Oh, you ever-loving Tavarich. Kiss the commandant for me. I wouldn't want to be you when this war's over for a million bucks. Sit down, comrade. Give Comrade Clayton your ploy. Comrade Clayton, can you come in, please? This is the prisoner who has been cooperative? Most cooperative. Mm. Tea? Yes, thank you. I heard your comrade prisoners shouting abuse at you. This does not disturb you? A little. 
It's kind of tough having your own countrymen hate you and spit on you. Mm, perfectly understandable. Cigarette? Thank you. Say any day, eh, Lockie? Hello. This man appears to be responsive to our way of thinking. I know. You stayed in your life history. You were dissatisfied with conditions in Toledo, Ohio. Why? I guess maybe it's because everybody seemed to be killing themselves, trying to get washing machines, deep freezes, cars, and a million other things. It is propaganda that they got these things. For some, maybe. But what bothered me was that dog-eat-dog -dog method of competitive enterprise, the lack of overall state ownership and control. And uh, who do you think started this war? Wall Street, sir. When did you come to believe that? When I heard your broadcast in Tokyo. The other guys used to kid this stuff, but eventually began to get under my hide. Under hide? Hey, die. <laughs> well said, under hide. I don't like to see guys get killed, and I don't like to see them exploited. I just think that maybe Russia's got the answer. Would you be willing to go on the radio and say that? Sure. I'd be happy to. Colonel Tung, I think this man is entitled to classification as a progressive and all the privileges attached there to him. Good. Starting today, you will live outside the barracks with the other progressives and will have the freedom of going in and out of the camp. You will receive a salary of 90,000 Chinese won a month to spend as you please. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, San Fong La. Pack your things. The guard will escort you to your new quarters. Thank you, sir. I assure you, I'll do my best to justify your faith. Mrs. Clayton? Yes? I'm Sergeant Wren. I hope you'll excuse me for introducing myself, but I've admired you from a distance for some time, and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. I see you are making progress here. Just starting. Do you have a match? No, but I have a light. Ah, oh, there you are, Tanya. I see you've met our new progressive. We hope that he will set an example for the whole camp. Thank you, sir. Oh, I have a suggestion for you. You see this poster? Instead of playing it for beef, you'd make communism look an awful lot more inviting if uh, you'd show a beautiful girl. Like, for instance, your wife here. Thank you. But in Russia, they don't have the American preoccupation with sex, you know. They don't dispense with it altogether. That's good. Nice to have met you. Uh, how do you say it, Comrade Ushka? That is close enough. And you, Comrade? I'll get my hat and briefcase. Here, I say. How'd you get along with that jolly blighter Clayton? Jolly well. What about his wife? Jolly better. Hype the armband. They pin that on you for putting Arkansas in the ice house? Take it easy, boy. Relax. I've got some great news for you. You're getting shot at sunrise. <laughs> no. As of now, I'm departing from your midst. I'm moving out of barracks number three. Well, what do you know? He's shacking up with those other cruds in Trader's Row. You make sure. Yeah! Oh! I'm getting me Rand's bed. Rand's bed. <laughs> hey, hey, what is this? What are you doing here? You guys looking for something? Yeah, I want the sack. Yeah, Rand's bed. I want the bed. Oh, the bed. Oh, I'm sorry, pal. You guys had to be told he was leaving me. I just guessed. Well, he's got the bed, so yeah, he's got the bed. Well, at least we'll be rid of that monkey. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Good thing, too. Uh, yeah, don't forget your commie books, Sergeant. Thanks. See this? It means I can go outside. At last, I'll have a chance to do a little work on Comrade Clayton. Oh, I am. One of the pros told me he was a Moscow correspondent for an American communist newspaper. He sold out his American citizenship for bigger things in Russia. 
that kind of a guy is sure to keep records, just in case he has to swing back again. Sounds like a good bet. They gotta find out exactly what happened to 13,000 of our guys reported missing. They gotta be able to lay it on the line at Pan Moon John and demand them back. I'll have to start by concentrating on his wife. Well, that'll be tough. Of course, there's nothing wrong with mixing a little pleasure with business, now is there? It's horrible, ain't it? The sacrifices a guy's gotta make for his country. Well, I'll just have to struggle with it as best I can. Yeah. So long, Brady. I'll keep in touch. Yeah. Hey, Rand. Uh, ask her if she's got a sister, huh? Or something. Sorry. You know, Brady, I just don't believe in double dates. See you later. He's sorry. Don't lie to us. You have consistently and deliberately caused disturbances in the indoctrination classes. Have you anything to say in your defense? You will go to trial as a reactionary, dangerous to the Chinese People's Voluntary Army. Taiki Chayla. Learning anything? It's quite an education. Sit down. Tea? Why, uh, uh, yes, thank you. You were a medical student, correct? Yes, sir. A white student would not have been conscripted. I enlisted, sir. You enlisted? I'm telling you the truth. I'm not trying to argue with you, sir. Why not? We want you to argue, if that's the way you feel. Isn't that so, Comrade Rand? I'll put it this way, Doc. If you'll keep an open mind, uh, let's say conduct a class for the other Negro troops and take these matters under fair discussion. You'll certainly make life a lot more pleasant for all of them. That's very considerate of you. But from what I've seen and read, I don't see why the kind of discussions you're talking about can serve any useful purpose. You must remember you have read nothing but the reactionary press. I've also read Marx, Lenin and Engels. Oh? And what did you think of them? It answers itself, sir. Their teaching was based on the assumption the poor get poorer and the rich get richer until the class struggle ends up in a revolution. It just hasn't happened that way. Oh, come now. And don't tell me you haven't observed the tremendous advance of human welfare under communism. Human welfare? I see nothing but cruelty here. Injured men are deliberately left without bandages. There are no medicines for the sick. I've had to do surgery with a jackknife. What would you expect for Western imperialistic dogs who invade this country? I'd expect decent, humane treatment by one human being towards another. That's what you find in America? They call you a nigger there, don't they? No one ever calls me that. They lynch you in America, don't they? Can't you see that it is only under the red flag of communism that all races are equal? I will tell you something, Colonel. The problem of the Negro in America will one day be ended. The suffering of you Chinese at the hands of your Russian masters is just beginning. That's beside the point. Are you or are you not going to cooperate with us? No, sir. Not in your way. That's final? Yes, sir. I've decided I'd much rather be black than red. Dantila! You're gonna make me write that letter to your wife, are you, Pop? Mm. Wouldn't think of such a thing. Here comes the Padre. Hold the music. Any news about Doc Padre? He's in the ice house, all right. I talked to him through the window. How is he? He looks bad. God willing, he'll recover. And those stinking brainwashers. I'll poison that Clayton yet. Why poison him? We know who put Doc on the carpet, just like we know who put Arkansas on the Hooskow. Yeah, I seem to remember a dirty rat of a stool pigeon. Used to live right around here. Recriminations won't help. 
Rather, we should pity him. No pity for this one, Father. He's one of us, a G.I. Something tells me he won't be one of us for long. Pike, right, give me that knife. I told you, any rough stuff and you'll get us all on a jam. Take it easy, Pop. Who can blame who when they find a body lying in the middle of a mud puddle, huh? The guy just tripped and fell on a knife. See? Please, son, remember the Lord has told us to forgive our enemies. Sure. But that don't go for stool pigeons, Padre. Give it to me, Pike. Who are you? Doc's one of my men. He was medic in my platoon. I got a personal interest in settling up with anybody that turned him in. Arkansas was my buddy, and he's still in the ice house. Come on, Pike. This is my job. Give me the knife. How do I know you'll do it right? Watch me. Here, look out. Meatball's coming in. Get rid of that. You come headquarters. Make snappy. Me? Yes, you. Wait a second. What are you arresting him for? He hasn't done anything. You can't take him. Please, boys, don't try to help. But why are they taking you? I suppose someone saw me talking to Doc at the window of the ice house. Move! Make snappy! This time, Clayton. You know, every time you bring me in here, it's a risk. Want me to get my throat cut in this camp? Important news from Pei Ping, comrade. From now on, you can pass up the routine work, dissension, escapes, and all that. At last, a new assignment. Now I can take off this crummy outfit. You'll wear it and keep wearing it. Now listen. Pei Ping informs us they have captured an American intelligence operator at Camp 4 at Pionton. That means we probably have one here. Why would they put a spy in a prison camp? They're after documentation on what they call the atrocities. They want to confront us with it at Pan Manjom, even bring formal charges against us before the United Nations. OK. If there's an operator here, I'll nail him. You uh, might use the confessional stunt more. I know my business. Leave it to me. Just see to it you mention me in your official reports. How you can get away with being a priest when you're not even a Catholic is beyond me. I learned a lot from the real Father Dolan before he was shot. Besides, I'm a pretty good actor. Nice thing about vodka, it doesn't taint the breath. It might redden your eyes. That could be from weeping for my flock. Oh. I got myself. Father Dolan. Must have had him on the carpet again. Hey, Padre. Something wrong, Father? The usual thing. They oppose me at every step. You're lucky they let you live. I hope and pray they don't take away my privilege of bringing a word of comfort to the boys. We're bringing the men a word of comfort, aren't we, comrade? Yeah, good solid reading material for progressives. Even got a bundle of daily workers from New York. Then they'll be able to get the latest baseball scores. Yeah, as of uh, four months ago. Of course, you know the Daily Worker articles don't approve of the exploitation of slave ball players. I'll save your words on this, holy Joe. Let's get this stuff in the library. One second, Rand. I find it my duty to warn you of this, even though I disapprove of your progressivism. Someone in camp is planning to kill you. Me? Well, who is it, Father? Or can't you tell me? You won't bring any harm to him. All I want to do is stay out of his way. It's Corporal Brady. Brady? 
Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank the Lord, my son. Oh, uh, you might uh, give him a copy of The Daily Worker with my compliments. Happy to. Hold it, buddy. You see this? Bills of sale. I sold 46 automobiles, all makes, all models. Propaganda. Don't be a sucker, Lee Chung. The broken down prisoners in this joint can afford automobiles. Why can't their comrade instructor? Capitalistic propaganda. Ah, now listen to me, buddy. I can deliver you a shiny brand new Ford after the war, laid down in Hong Kong. All you gotta do is get in and drive it off. So? Sure. Uh, don't worry about that. I'm keeping my own eye peeled for the law. And I just picture yourself. You get into that car with your wife and kids on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Pretty soon you're out of the team and city. You're into that beautiful countryside. Mm, mountains, trees, places to picnic. Mm, and you just float along. Hydromatic. Air conditioning. Radio? Radio? Short wave. You pick up all the programs from Moscow. From mm. Moscow? How much money do you make a month? 100,000 Chinese won. Wow. What's that American money? $4.12. Four. Dollar 12 cents. Four <laughs> hear such joy? Listen to those farm workers' voices. Turn it down. I'm trying to write my next broadcast. Want some more tea? Huh? Want some more tea? Listen, you GIs. This is one GI talking to you in a lingo you can understand. I'm Sergeant John A. Rand from Toledo, Ohio, and what I'm saying right now is of my own free will without coercion of any kind. First of all, comrades, don't let them kid you that Russia or China started this war. Just look at the facts. The American military forces were put in South Korea as a dagger pointed at the heart of the peaceful land of China. Then, totally without provocation, they unleashed a vicious attack on the Republic of North Korea, which is now so valiantly defending her liberty. The real suckers are guys like you and me, who are being used as cannon fodder to satisfy the Wall Street imperialists. I guarantee you that the treatment you will receive to the camp will be friendly and humane. Made contact with Brady. Coercion. Coercion. We consume 12 Atrocity information. So I say to you, fellow GIs, don't fight this fool's war. Give up. Surrender with honor at the first chance you get. Excellent. Sorry, Modern I'm Lord Ho Ho. I'm bored with propaganda. Can't we have some music from Hong Kong? If you want a change of routine, why don't you come with me to Penman Jam in the morning? That would bore me even more. You could help me down there, can you? The place will be humming with top brass and commissars. And you would like me to, as you say, warm up to a few of them? Might help if you're a little less frozen. I melted before on your behalf, comrade husband. And he did not get me to America as you promised when you married me. Can't you ever forget all that, Tanya? Come with me to Panmanjam and I'll... I'll get you that new sable coat you want. Deep as is my passion for sable, I will not do anything that will further your career at my expense. Sometimes I wonder why I ever picked you out of the ballet. And as an example of the way we were treated, I want to tell you a little bit about our camp commandant, Colonel Sai Tung. He is a noble specimen of the revolutionary man of the 20th century. Strong, intelligent, understanding. And with a heart that beats always for the suffering proletarian. 
What's he mean by that? It's... It, it's uh, censorable. It's highly censorable. I suppose you will tell me you came to see my husband. That's right. About my next radio broadcast. You did not see him pass you on the road just now? I saw a car. Was he in it? Why will you not be honest, Sergeant, and admit that you were waiting outside for him to go? All right. I was waiting outside for him to go. That's better. I knew you would come. Only I did not think it would be so soon. Nice layout. Your uh, husband off to Pan Munjao? He might change his mind and come back. Not a chance. There's a big job at stake there in charge of teaching American prisoners of war to refuse repatriation. I'm surprised he did not take you with him. You are such a prize exhibit. Talking about prize exhibits, I wonder why I didn't take you. He wanted to, but I declined. <laughs> well, nothing like ballet to build the body beautiful, huh? You, uh, still doing your entree, Sean? Is that what you came here for, to discuss the ballet? Not exactly. You are taking too much for granted, Sergeant. Am I? Yes, because you see, I do not like progressives. No fool. How come? I do not like progressives because I hate and despise communists. They're all of the same breed, men who have ceased to be men. You can get 50 years in a work camp for that. I have been threatened with work camp before. Take your hat, comrade, and yourself, and your arm band, and get out. Just a minute now. How do you know I won't tell your husband what his dear, sweet wife thinks of communism? He knows. But there is only one possible excuse for you being here, Sergeant. And that is that you're only pretending to be a progressive so as to enjoy, let us say, the privileges? How would you know? Because I can see you are accustomed to taking what you want from life. All right. Just for the ducks, let's say I'm in it for the privileges. And uh, speaking of privileges, I might as well start availing myself of a few of them right now, huh? Best vodka is in the lower cabinet. Attention, attention. A special announcement from the Commandant, Colonel Tsai Tung. Comrade prisoners, one of your group has been caught trying to escape. If you will direct your attention to the administration building, you will see how far he got. His destination is solitary confinement in what you call the ice house. Let this be a warning to you prisoners. Hereafter, anyone trying to escape will not be treated so kindly. He will be shot on sight. That is all. I told him not to go. I told him I didn't want to write that letter to his wife. 
José. Lo que estamos cocinando aquí, amigo, está muy, muy sabroso. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No kidding. Well, all it means is that it is quite delicious. <laughs> well, I just hope it don't smell too delicious. The whole camp will be wanting some. Brother, if they ever knew the father, don't let sneak this into us. Wow. See Pop in the ice house? Sure did. They let me fix the poor guy up a little. Ah, uh, this is the day, Aki. We didn't bake your cake, but what do you think we got here? I just can't imagine, son. Uh, I don't believe it. A chicken. Uh, Take it easy. It ain't done yet. Ain't it beautiful? We got Father Dolan to thank for that. Man, I sure had myself a jamboree down there in that ice house. That Chinese gal, she sort of took a hankering for me every time she come down there to check on that prisoner report. <laughs> She gave me this here tobacco. She even promised me she was going to tone down that music in the morning to a nice, soft, pretty crooning lullaby. Oh, <laughs> hey, I've got news from the ice house that isn't funny at all. Uh, yeah, you know what he told me? They knew all about his escape plan. They deliberately let him climb into that supply truck. And then instead of the truck going to the depot as it always does, they delivered him right to Sai Tung's office. They laughed in his face. Mm. What do you know? Pop says somebody in the camp tipped him off. And it had to be one of us guys because nobody else knew. Oh, that's crazy. Who'd do a thing like that? The only one we could think of was Sergeant Rand. That's impossible. He hasn't been in the camp for a week. How would he know anything? Well, whoever it is, he's not just a small-time squealer trying to catch guys who want to escape. What do you mean, Doc? Well, they... They had Pop on the carpet for 22 hours. They beat him until he passed out, then threw water on him to bring him to. Do you know why? They told him atrocity information has been leaking out and endangering the commie position at Pan Lan Jum. And they were trying to get him to admit he was one of the informants. It's ridiculous. All right, so what? I'm trying to tell you they've got an espionage operator right in this camp and what the rap is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Happy reunion. Welcome, Arkansas. <laughs> Hello, Father. Welcome, Doc. Gladdens an old priest's heart to see the prisoners return to, uh, shall we say, the prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Padre. Soup will be ready in a minute. Padre, you such a good man. I'd like a privilege one of these days of just setting you down and converting you into a good old hard shell Baptist. <laughs> 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 well, thanks for the honor, Arkansas, but I'm afraid I'm not worthy. I have this day looted a rabbit hutch. Carrots. Oh, great. That'll really help the flavor. Sorry, Padre, but to qualify for my congregation, you got to snitch your rabbits, too. <laughs> All joking aside, I wish we could instill the virtue of Christian forgiveness in our captors. Mm. It's such a pity what they're doing to Pop. It's a crime. Yeah. All the poor guy wanted to do was get back to his wife and kids. I know. I know, but apparently they think there is an informer. grieves me to think of his torment. And of the torment that must be weighing on the conscience of the real informer. If there is one. Sitting by, helpless. Knowing how that poor man is suffering. Oh, Angla. Asam, I'm going to go on doing all. You can go here. I told Mylin to visit her relatives across the Yalu River. Nice going. That'll keep her away for a couple of days. I cooked Poroshki for you, and I found one bottle of champagne. Wasn't Napoleon who said that an army can't march in an empty stomach? Yes. Shelters in the village. It's all right. We'll be safer up here. Look, you can see some of them now. UN bombers. I do 
Attention! Attention! Enemy airplanes approaching Pyongyang. Go to your barracks until the all clear. Go to your barracks now. Write that letter to his wife, Corporal. Yeah. Say a prayer for Pop, my father. Say one for me, will you? That radio station goodbye, too. I hope so. Then you won't have to write any more of those speeches. to me so you could find what you came here to find. I don't know what you're talking about. I will show you. I'll show you what's in that safe. Not papers, Sergeant, not confidential files. My husband is too clever for that. It's jewelry. My own personal collection of trophies. Do you want to know how I got these trophies, Sergeant? I got them from men my husband introduced me to. Important men, commissars. My husband told me they would help get us out of Russia and into America, but my husband lied. He was using me to advance himself in the party. Tanya, I did not want... And you are the same as my husband. All right. If that's the way you want it. First, let me tell you this. Sure, when I first met you, were just another good-looking woman. But it's different now. It's that simple, and you can take it or leave it. Comrade prisoners, two o'clock and time for daily class discussion. All prisoners, go to your barracks and discuss today's lecture for the next two hours. I want to see my lawyer. I repeat the order of Colonel Saitung. 
Anyone who does not enter into the spirit of free discussion will be punished. Oh. Something tells me that Chinese gal don't belong in Muleville, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm too young to die here. I would like to speak on the subject how the Ford automobile was invented in the USSR. I vote the subject of women, just plain women. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the door. Who's in charge? Uh, I'd nominate myself that honor, sir. Hey, Second the motion. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm taking over. Yes. Now, look. I just heard what the comrade instructor said. Yes. And I don't like it. No. You know why? Because I don't dig that kind of talk. No. <laughs> <laughs> There is a word going around that I'm a monster. That is a misconception. <laughs> I'm no monster. I'm a sportsman. <laughs> I'll bowl for you. <laughs> <laughs> you put your index finger in the ball, pull the pin, and throw it down the alley. <laughs> I get more pin boys that way. <laughs> I hate to break this up, gang, but here comes Charlie Chan. Get out your notebooks quick. And uh, in reference to our comrade instructor's stern warning against the uh, Marshall Plan this morning, I should like to go on record as agreeing that it is nothing but an American trick to enslave Western Europe and to cast minus vein the Cadus, the strength of the proletariat Cadus, until there is a chance to get it around the phosphate. For these nations will create a spine the imperialist yoke. <clears throat> Isn't that so, comrade instructor? Oh, uh, I do not know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's put it this way. Uh, Li Chang, if, if we don't cater spine the imperialistic yoke, the whole Gidigarum may, may fall and out. <laughs> so we must crater spine, by all means. Oh, of course. That's right. Uh, quite so. Quite so. I will see that Colonel Sai Tung receives a good report on this barracks today. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Help you, Father? Oh, no thanks. I was looking for my prayer book. A communist library is rather an odd place to find a prayer book. Yes, but you see, I lent it to a POW, and instead of returning it to me, he said he put it in the literature collection box, but it wasn't there. Fortunately for you, the boys are attending a lecture. I don't think they'd exactly approve of a priest, uh, let's say, snooping about. Ah, here it is. Sorry to trouble you. One second. Some of the boys were wondering about you, Father. How come a priest like you happened to end up in North Korea? I thought everyone knew the story of Father Francis Dolan. I've never heard it. What would it matter to you, a progressive, that I built a church stone by stone in a little village near Taizhong? that the communists gutted it to the ground as they retreated, shooting half my parishioners. It's kind of funny they didn't shoot you. I prayed. 
and my prayers were answered. But of course, you wouldn't understand. No, I guess not. your message. I want to show you something I have. It's what I call my absolution. My act of penance. You're beginning to sound like a Father Dolan. I noticed the tick what was different in this panel, so I looked until I discovered why. My husband kept his reports here. This is what you have been looking for all the time. April 14th, 26 medium tanks moved from Vladivostok to Peiping. May 9th, 11 MiGs flown from Vladivostok to Pyongyang. It is not only a record of Soviet military aid to China, but a listing of prison camps and numbers of prisoners. How come your husband kept such records? Like all commissars, he too is afraid of the milkman. Milkman? It, it is a Russian joke. One is afraid of the milkman because when he knocks in the morning, it may not be the milkman. If my husband has to escape, these papers are his passport to the free world. Oh, interesting. Let me copy them for you. It's better that way. Thank you, Tanya. You're the nicest thing that ever happened to me. I've got to get back to the compound. If you don't mind, I saw your jeep. I thought you might give me a lift back to camp. It's quite a coincidence you're uh, seeing my jeep. Yes, isn't it, though? We seem to be running into each other every place. Don't we, though? I must say that even for a progressive, you're certainly making progress. In what way? Oh, come, come now, Sergeant. I've got an eye for beautiful women myself. It's a fairly broad-minded statement for a priest. I'm a fairly broad-minded priest. Where'd you say your church was, Father? The, uh, the one that was gutted? South of Taizhong. Tell me, was it tough for you to learn your Latin, Father? Latin? You know, I was a pretty good Latin student myself. Galia est omnis divisa en partes tres. Not bad, not bad. Tell me, Father, what does mea culpa mean? Isn't that in your mass? What's it mean? It means this, Sergeant Rand. I thought you were a phony. Now keep driving straight on down to the Commandant's office, and we'll pick up your friend Brady. Brady's no friend of mine. You told me yourself that he wanted to kill me. Oh, but he writes you such nice love letters. Full of little petty point holes. Shouldn't leave these Billy Doos lying around in your Jeep, Sergeant. Very compromising. Why drive so fast, Sergeant? You'll get there soon enough. Father Dolan. I should have known you weren't a priest when I saw your collar was four times too big. It wasn't from malnutrition. Oh, no. It was because it belonged to the real Father Dolan. The one who was killed after his church was gutted. Oh, no. Not even good enough to be buried.
Bertie, you've got to get out of here before dark. Before the junior prom? You fixed me up a date with Tanya's sister? No, but Tanya paid out with a real jackpot. You're quite an operator, aren't you? Cut the cracks. The radio station's been knocked out for good. So you're gonna have to take that stuff over the line tonight. Well, great. That's a cinch. I'll change myself into a groundhog and burrow my way through Korea. Listen, I'm coming in at chow time. We'll get you out of here somehow. It's a date. Come on, doggies, come and get it! Barrack six, squad four, chuck it off! Man, does that rice smell like home cooked? No samples. Well, fill her up, Bo. Plumb up the brim, because I'm telling you, my squad's so hungry they can eat the whitewash off in a fence pose. Only they ain't got no fence pose. Barracks three, squad two, next! All right, you chow hounds, put on your bib and tuckers. Best company manners, or you don't get none of this here delicious rice corn pone. Cut out the gab, Arkansas, and dish it out. It's the first rice we had in a couple of months. This rice should check a lot of the dysentery, especially if the guys keep boiling our drinking water. Hey, Brady, look what's coming. Now, why should he be coming in here? Now, don't get your gastric juices in an uproar, guys. Save it for the rice. Maybe if we don't notice him, he won't notice us. Now, you guys just watch me. You don't have to do a thing except stand there and watch. I'd still rather be standing in some other place. Sure, but we progressives have got to stick together for our own safety. In this case, all I want you to do is be there so that nobody jumps me from behind. Yeah, we got it. I hate to interrupt your dinner, Corporal, but uh, Father Dolan informs me you're carrying around a cute little knife to stick me with one night. If I ain't, maybe I oughta. And if he don't, I will. I know your type of reactionary, Brady. You'll sneak up on a guy when his back's turned, but when it comes to facing him in the open, you're among those missing. Let's see you throw away that knife and take me on in a fair fight. Better. Why are you dirty crud? Kill him, Rand. That pike sure packs a wallop. Be a thief in about it. it was your idea, wasn't it? an armistice? Not at all. Nothing so impersonal as that. First of all, my love, you may get me some vodka. Of course. No, no, not that. The lower cabinet. Tanya, I have been appointed assistant adjutant commissar for the Far East. We're being transferred to Peiping. To Peiping? The imperial city of the ancient mandarins. We shall rate a palace, at the very least. A palace? You look as if you're facing a firing squad.
What is it, Tanya? Well, imagine that now. Copying my official records. Now, why should you want to do a thing like that, Tanya? You were going to give these to someone, weren't you? Come, Tanya, you know you're going to tell me. Was it that good-looking young American? No. Then who was it? Hmm. I see this is going to take a little brainwashing. You know how I like brainwashing. We'll do it by playing a variation of that charming game called Russian Roulette. First, I remove all the bullets, replacing only one. Now, I spin the cylinder. Now, we point the gun. Now, when I pull the trigger, there's one chance out of six she will be shot. Here, your luck is holding out. Now, my sweet, tell me, was it Sergeant Rand you were getting that information for? Just the simple word, yes. Sure, he's got all of Clayton's identification papers. Yes. I'm gonna put a crimp in the commie position. We're checking a couple of precious bundles over the line. So long, Brady. And remember, you're Clayton and she's Mrs. Clayton. Only don't take that too literally. Well, she's showing you. There's a lot I've never been able to tell you. Let's just leave it that way, huh? Or better still, this way. Comrade prisoners, the armistice has been signed at Pamunjom. Hey, hey, fellas, I'm gonna swim home. <laughs> When you go to that gate, you'll be in a neutral zone and no longer in the custody of the Chinese Volunteer People's Army. Boy, is that tough! <laughs> attention! Attention! You will be screened by the Armistice Commission and given your choice of repatriation or coming back to us. You may go. Hey, Slade! Ramirez! Hey, man! 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 Hey,
Sergeant John A. Rand comes now voluntarily to hear the arguments of your side. Usher him in. Sit down. Sergeant Rand, we're fully aware of your activities as a communist sympathizer in the POW camp. Regardless of that fact, we offer you the sanctuary of the United States. I'm sorry, Colonel. I believe democracy as you know it to be a failure. Maybe this will help you to change your mind. It's your mother. Listen to me, son. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong or make a sentimental plea for you to come home to a land that obviously you have turned against. All I can say is that I don't understand it. Maybe I didn't raise you right. Even though I was always rather proud of how you turned out, I just don't know. It's not easy for a mother to raise a son. <laughs> and then find out that for no reason at all he's turned out to be a traitor to his country. This is a terrible thing you've done to me. I try to forgive and understand. But I can't. I, I can't. I'd like to be excused. I'm still offering you the sanctuary of the United States. I'm not interested. Very well, then. You've made your decision. Goodbye. Goodbye to you and every warmongering reactionary like you. John. Take good care of her, Brady. I sure will. And keep your hands off, huh? I'll be back sooner than you think. Goodbye, Tanya. I'll be back. 